Well, welcome back. We know the cost of long-term care is astronomical. So today, a way to protect your assets. And joining us now is attorney Dan Krauss from Krauss Estate Planning and Elder Law Center. He's here to discuss Medicaid planning as part of estate planning. So good to see you, Dan. Well, it's great to be here, Ryan. I'm really uh, grateful. Oh, I'm glad you're here because I think this is really important. And I'm curious to start just how did you become and how long have you been uh, an estate planning attorney? So I've been doing estate planning actually before I was licensed to practice law because my grandparents needed some help while I was in law school. So that was the first taste I had really in practicing law and I fell in love with it. Um, I love my grandparents and uh, since then it's been 23, 24 years that I've been doing estate planning and I've, uh, I've managed to to make a decent business out of it. Oh, that's great. And I know that there's so many different fields that attorneys can go into, and there are other estate planners, but what does it mean to be, as you are, a specialist in estate planning? So there are different specialties, just like in the medical field, you may see a specialist for a certain thing. I am an estate planning law specialist, which is, um, it's a certification given by a board called the Estate Planning Law Specialist Board Incorporated. And it's a nationwide thing made up of attorneys. It's nonprofit. And essentially, you have to practice specifically in this area. Mm -hmm. You don't branch out too much. We don't do divorces. We don't do bankruptcies. Uh, in our office, and for me, we do estate planning. We mm -hmm. do estate planning and estate administration. And so we're allowed to call ourselves specialists. In fact, if someone who hasn't gone through the certification process calls themselves a specialist, they could get in trouble from the board. Mm -hmm. So there are seven of us in Wisconsin and uh, others throughout the United States. But uh, it's You're the best. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if, you don't, if I don't say so, yourself, right? No, that's great. Well, you know, uh, I'm imagining it's got to be very overwhelming. I think about it uh, peop for people that I know and parents and grandparents things. Uh, stressful to begin to even be overwhelmed about approaching the subject. So what is one of your favorite things that you enjoy most about your work? Is it the relief that you see in clients when they find you or? Well, that is a great question and you're right on the money. It's when people come to me, oftentimes they are stressed out. And even sometimes after our first meeting, before we've accomplished anything, before we've uh, just, all we've done is essentially told them, we've got a solution for you. And they say when they leave the office, I feel so much better. I'm glad we're on this road. But so, one of the, the best things that I've been told is, I saved somebody's life. Now, that doesn't happen maybe for firefighters or police officers, but attorneys don't save mm. people's lives. And maybe take it with a grain of salt, but I thought it was the greatest compliment because the person said that I was able to save her parent um, probably about $180,000. Wow. Which normally, she would have had no inheritance at all. Mm -hmm. She was able to, with that inheritance that after her mother passed away, was able to not work anymore. The work that was stressing her out and causing her health problems, she was able to get rid of that and she says that it saved her life. Now I like to pat myself on the back yes, for that, but these are the greatest. That is life changing exactly. money. Yeah. Yes. That's really cool. Is there something we want to just talk about the difference between Medicare and Medicaid and how that affects this business? So elder planning or elder law, there's many different areas of it, but the area that I practice in is called Medicaid planning. Mm. So Medicare is something that all of us, as long as we are citizens or are permanent residents, when we turn 65, we get that Medicare. So that that pays for most of our health care. If it's, if it's inpatient or outpatient, you get paid for health care through the government program that you've paid into your whole working life. With um, long-term care though, Medicare and the Medicare supplements do not pay for that type of care. Many people don't realize that. What happens is if it's long-term care, you have to pay out of your pocket if you mm. don't have a special long-term care insurance policy, okay. which people should look into. Mm -hmm. If you're in your 40s or maybe your 50s and you're healthy, look into a long-term care policy because it can help to stop you from having to spend everything. However, Medicaid mm -hmm. then is the program that pays if people don't have the assets to pay on their own. Okay. Now we can also help people to qualify for Medicaid while putting aside 
maybe a hundred thousand that, dollars. That's the estate planning hundred. right there. That's exactly. brilliant. Um, is it moral to plan for it? Do people have some, you know, legality questions about that? So it is absolutely legal and then we don't hide anything from the government while we're doing this. Um, but some people feel that maybe it's not for them. So morality is from person to person. And I'll tell you the story that, that I believe, and I've, I've come to really uh, feel that this is true, is that there is discrimination happening. Now, discrimination comes in many forms. The government discriminates against people, not by their race or their religion or any of that stuff. They discriminate based on what illness you have. Mm -hmm. So when you're old, if you have an illness like cancer or heart disease, mm -hmm. Medicare is going to pay your bills. You can be a billionaire. It, Medicare will pay for you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that. But if your malady happens to be Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, something that's going to put you in assisted living or nursing care or maybe yeah. even just some sort of palliative care, you have to pay out of your pocket. Wow, that is that does sound discriminatory and absolutely unfair. And I'm sure people are going to want to know why and have more questions about that. And they can reach out. I know there's some video of you too that when we go to your website, we can see um, more information. There's almost like you're providing free information just through, through the videos, as we see right there. Very photogenic. Um, <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dan. I think that this is a great start to the conversation, and everyone should feel very Con, um, confident in reaching out to you to take this very important step. So thanks for it's, joining us today. It's been a pleasure, Ryan. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, you can contact Krauss Estate Planning and Elder Law Center at 414-285-1082 or find them online at estateplanningpeople.com and fill in the contact us form.